10,000 miles of edge. Looking for the long pulse of Scotland. Not here in the central belt where most folk are. Not Scotland land, twinned with pound land or Lego land. Its national flower, the plastic bag. Not its mapped centre, Shehalian, with its garden, the black wood of Rannach, home of my people. But at the farthest edges, its islands and sea coasts. The sea protects us. The sea links us. From the Solway Firth round the rims of Galloway, past the Firth of Clyde and its closed shipyards, to the nestled isles of Bute and Arran, and round Kintyre through the North Channel to the open sea and Isla home to Lagavulin and Loch Finlagen, once the seat of the Lord of the Isles. Half Scotland's catch is taken here from the Malin Sea to the Minches, from the Mull of Kintyre to Cape Roth. To the lean wilderness of Jura, empty, knuckled by the three paps with the raised beaches to the west and north, where the tide race funnels into the bottleneck, the narrow gap with Scarba to make the monster that is Corryvreckan, the speckled cauldron, the whirlpool, where Orwell nearly drowned, where the sea blisters sliding up into hanging towers that drop like lift shafts down into their own absence. Then the garden of Colonsay and Oronsay, safe harbour of Scalisaig, the wooded valley of Caloran, magnolia, maples, rhododendrons, Mull, promontory island, Iona, the bright chapel, Staffa's pillared cave of organ pipes, to Tyree and Col and the small isles beyond. The sea, sown by dolphins, moving north to Elgol, where the ridged keels of the black Coolin rise over Loch Kurisk's hidden glass. Sky under its own sky, island of the MacLeods and Dunvegan Castle, where Ambratach She, the fairy flag, is held, and when unfurled is said, will multiply the men on the battlefield and win the day for the clan as it has done twice and holds one more victory yet. In the east crook, in the inner sun, is Rasse. The deep sea here is now where submarines sleep and the ghost of Sorley's Haleg, where only ferns and birches grow on the slope below the ruins of the cleared village where their fields had been. West to the Western Isles, the Long Island, 65 islands long, 15 of them still alive. Over a hundred miles from Burneray to Burneray, the Rhenish point to the butt of Lewis. Their names are Litany, Mingale, Pabe, Sandre, Vatterse, Eriske, Barra of the Seal Song. South Uist, North Uist, Lewis of the Gallic Psalm, that hypnotic drone, slow as Pibroch, bleak and rolling as this cold Atlantic swell. The raised stones, the great circle of Callanish, the double skinned Broch of Dun Carloway, and the hidden stones, like the beasts of Holm. The skerry just out from Stornoway Harbour, which sank the Isle Air on New Year's Day with 200 sailors, 50 yards from home. When the seaweed harvest failed, the islanders made offerings to Shoney, 
the sea god wading into the ocean with porridge or a cup of ale, pouring it into the breaking waves, throwing the produce of the land into the sea so the sea would throw its produce onto the land. And now all we feed it is sewage, oil and plastic. To the outliers and furthest west to Herta, where people had lived 3,000 years at least on seabirds and their eggs, till 1930 when the last were taken off and given work on the mainland in forestry, when not one of them had ever seen a tree. Past the Flannan Isles, Rona, Sulskeri, the seal island, north of Sutherland and Cape Roth, to the lethal Pentland Firth, to come at last round Hoy's great cliffs of red sandstone, the old man and Rackwick Bay, to the haven in the sand, the harbour of Stromness, gateway to Neolithic Orkney. Within a mile's radius, the chambered tomb of Mayshow, the stones of Stenness and the ring of Brodger, with a ness of Brodger's temple complex being slowly released from the ground by trowels, aligned as it is between these two stone circles and two lochs, hung in a basin of light. Einhallow, the holy island, vanishing island, that disappears as you row towards it, and the islands of Westray, Papa Westray, the home of Pape, islands of islands of islands, North Ronaldsay, where the sheep are kept on the shore by a dry-stained dyke and eat seaweed. Past Fair Isle and on up to Shetland, the furthest north is Outstack, north of Unst, and furthest east in all Scotland, Boundskerry in the Outskerries. See the perfect broch on Musa, the fulmers planing at sombre and fitful head, the shell sand sweep of beach at St. Ninian's air. Down past the peatlands, by Helmsdale and Brora, to the Dornoch Firth and Murray Firth, to Lossiemouth and Hopeman Beach, where we huddled, sand blown behind windbreaks on Scotland's cold shoulder every summer. Then round the ports of Fraserburgh and Peterhead, whaling, fishing, then oil, then heroin. My coast, lost like Forvey to moving sands, like the dunes of Balmedy to one American's greed, and my city, Aberdeen, Lost to oil, to the robber barons and city planners, the thieves. From the sea village of Fitty, close in at the wall under the waves, to the castle gate and the toll booth, down the spittles, cobbled streets to the old town, the melted snow kirk and the beauties that remain, King's College, Dunbar's, Market Cross, the Channonry to Seaton Park, with the dawn glittering below in the sun, curved like a crozier under the gaze of St. Macher. On Sunday, south through the Merns and the great Highland Fault to Stonehaven Bay to visit the grandparents, with the reward of a Gillianotti's ice cream cone at the end, while sunset song played in the background over Caron Water under Donata. Then Crail, Piddenweem, all those pretty East Fife fishing villages, Anstruther, Ely, to the forth and over it, to the great good sense of Edinburgh, built like Aberdeen on seven hills, but great hills that still stand guard above the city. Climbing the Nelson Monument on Carlton Hill, looking out over the metalled firth to the kingdom, south to the city, to the Pentlands, east to the sea, down at the Parthenon, unfinished, barely started, 
the flecked people far below, and my father standing there, smoking, dead these twenty years. And all that's south of here are the marches, the debatable lands, the borders down to Berwick. What matters here is this, the permeable sea membrane of land, Scotland's ten thousand miles of edge, from the Solway Firth to the Tweed. The sea protects us, the sea links us. We are many people, settlers, resting a living from the sea, the Celtic Scots of Darwida, the Picts, the Norse, the Normans, flying under many flags, Saltire, Standard, Union, but quickly European, trading for centuries across those borders, and internationalists, citizens of the world. And we peopled the world from these shores, invented, built, explained, explored. We wrote ourselves into history from this small country, and our country was peopled in turn. The Irish from famine, Jews from the pogroms, Asian, Italian, Russian, Polish, all welcomed, all. We don't own the land. We tend it briefly. The sea protects us and keeps us, and the sea links us, lets us in, and lets us leave. I was brought up on the northeast coast of Scotland and I spent most of my early life walking by the sea or walking up into the highlands, which were not so far away. But the sea is what left an indelible mark on me and when I go back to Scotland, it's, it's edges that attract me most vigorously and the islands, those edges off edges that I wanted to explore further and they still give me sustenance and nutrition every time. Uh, they are the great gift of Scotland and uh, so that's what I've written about here. <laughs> 